the Dolphins be insane to take Justin Herbert over Tua? I think their fan base isn't going to like that very much because I think they want the known name from college, whether it's damaged goods or not. And two is something the Dolphins have been talking about for a while. But one of the things I find interesting about the Dolphins for the last 20 years is they've become a local team instead of a national team after being one of the winningest franchises in the history of the sport is that Nick Saban might still be in the pros. Nick Saban might still be in Miami if the last time he had to choose at quarterback between two quarterbacks, one of whom was injured. He had chosen Drew Brees instead of Dante Culpepper. So here the Dolphins find themselves again trying to choose between a guy and Herbert that their fan base couldn't possibly care any less about and Tua, a guy who's a decorated champion and comes in injured. I'd be surprised if the Dolphin fan base isn't outrageously angry about this the same way they were when Ted Ginn Jr. was selected ahead of Brady Quinn. The Dolphins fan base got mad about that, too, and they would have been wrong with either choice. It just feels, though, like all of this Herbert to the Dolphins talk, which is centered in this Barry Jackson story in the Miami Herald, it all just feels like a smokescreen. And I'm not, I'm not trying to impugn Barry Jackson. It's just exactly what I would do if I was Chris Greer, the GM of the Dolphins. I would tell Barry Jackson or someone like him that, hey, we've been really deep scouting Justin Herbert. And in fact, not being able to check Tua Tungabailoa's injuries makes it so hard for us to even possibly take him. <laughs> when in reality, I don't buy any of this ongoing theory about the NFL draft in general that because of the coronavirus, all of these teams are more risk averse. I don't see that happening. I don't see NFL GMs being any constitutionally different. I don't see them becoming mutual fund investors when you have a potential next transcendent quarterback on the table who might just remind you of Drew Brees. I'd like to apologize for laughing while Dan was talking about Dolphins fans being angry. He's right, right? They've done hashtag tank for Tua for a year now. I was laughing because I remembered when Justin Herbert first broke out, I tried to come up with a hashtag for him and tweeted Bustin for Justin, which did not go well for me. <laughs> Back to the question. If this is an injury thing, fine. I, I, you know, I, we don't know. I don't think we can definitively say anything about Tua. But if it's a football thing, I just don't get it. I have watched a lot of these quarterbacks. But you know what? I do get it, right? Because GMs do this every year. They go for the tall, athletic guy with the rocket arm who maybe struggles a little bit with processing and decision making under pressure, things that Tua is great at. But they do it all the time because they are the Carrie Bradshaws of sports. They will always flock to the high variance guy instead of settling for the high floor guy. Dan, do you know who Carrie Bradshaw is? Uh, I do know, Sex in the City. Dan, by the way, like Mina, is Dan, who is Dan? Is Dan a Miranda? Like, <laughs> what? A Miranda? You've made me, why don't I get to be Mr. Big? Why do I have to be no. Miranda? Yeah, Pablo, you you're the Charlotte, Dan's a Carrie, I'm a Miranda, Poppy's a Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Good Lord, woman. You've just put my, my father, my promiscuous poppy. 